Hi and welcome to Steve's Kitchen. Today I've got my flat cap on and I'm going to show you how to make the perfect Yorkshire pudding. Now, I've got a little bit of Yorkshire money in me so I should be able to make uh, a good Yorkshire pudding. And several people have said to me, how can I make the Yorkshire pudding so they rise beautifully and don't sit there like a little hockey puck in the bottom? It's not that difficult guys, so here I'm going to show you today how to make a perfect Yorkshire pudding. Follow me, see how it's done. So for the Yorkshire pudding recipe, you're going to need equal amounts of eggs to milk to flour. Now, I've broken four eggs over here into a measuring dish, so you can see that four eggs equals roughly a cup of liquid eggs. And we've already got a cup of flour in our bowl, so I'm just going to move the eggs over here now. Pop those in, and now in goes the milk, equal quantities to say milk to egg milk and flour. And I'm doing this in a pouring jug because later on, once we've mixed this batter up, we're going to be pouring it into this tin. I'm just going to add a, a teaspoon and a half of salt. And just mix those together now to get our batter. Now this tin here in front of me is a little bit like a, a cake tin, but a little bit deeper. And we're going to be putting a block, uh, a small uh, cube of lard into each one of these trays and heating it up in the oven to a very high temperature, as high as your oven will go, 250 degrees uh, Celsius would be perfect. Uh, we're going to be heating that up after our Yorkshire pudding batter is made. So we mix that up into a nice smooth batter and then we're going to let that sit for half an hour on the side. Now a lot of the mistakes people make is putting the batter into the fridge. I don't know where that comes from really, but if you put the batter into the fridge, you're going to make it very cold and your hot oil in the pan here, which you've taken all the trouble to heat up, when you pour it into here, it's going to cool the oil down quickly and your Yorkshire puddings won't rise as well. So don't put this into the fridge, leave it out on the side at room temperature for half an hour to settle. So now into our Yorkshire pudding tin, we're just going to add a block of lard into each segment. Now you can use cooking oil, probably about a, a tablespoon of cooking oil into each one. Um, a lot of people use duck fat as well, but pretty much any cooking fat will do. Then we're going to pop this into the oven at 250 degrees. The hottest your oven will go, ours will go a little hotter than that even, but about 250 degrees. And we're going to heat this fat up until it's spitting hot before we pop our batter in there and then cook them off. So there you have it, we've got some lard in each one of the trays, now pop that into the oven. So our oven is fully up to temperature now. Um, normally you would put your Yorkshire pudding batter into the oven once you've taken your meat out if you're doing a roast dinner, but uh, we're just doing Yorkshire puddings today, so I've got this up to 250. We'll pop that into the oven. And that's going to take about five minutes or so to come up to temperature. That lard is going to melt down and then we'll be ready to put our batter mix in. So our oil has been in the oven now about five minutes or so and that's got up to a nice hot temperature. Now we don't want to pull this out, the tray out and let it cool down so we're just going to open it and pull the tray out and add our batter. Let the heat out. Ooh, that's beautiful. You see, each of those have melted down now. So you take your batter and you've just given it a little stir before you use it. You see the smoke coming off, that's perfect. And we're going to put around about half, a half fill each of the trays. Don't worry about getting a little batter over the side. So half fill each of the trays with the Yorkshire pudding batter. That's the, almost the perfect amount there. And we pop that back in very quickly, keeping it hot. And there you go.
Well, there you have it. I'm just going to turn the oven down. They've been in for about 11 minutes, and they have risen beautifully. A lot of heat will come out, so stand back. Look at those Yorkshire puddings. They've risen beautifully. Wow. This is a new oven to me, so I haven't cooked in this one before, Yorkshire puddings, but it's, uh, it's maybe even a little hotter than uh, our last oven. So I'll bring them over onto the side. There we go. Yorkshire puddings, they start to shrink once you've taken them out a little bit, but we'll just pop them on the side here and let them cool down. So there's a couple of Yorkshire puddings on a plate. Normally this would be served with a roast dinner, but I'm just gonna, for demonstration purpose, put two on a plate here, and we're just gonna serve that up with a rich beef onion gravy, the way it would have been traditionally done. And that there is a good example of the perfect Yorkshire puddings with gravy. So let me just try one of these now. They're light and fluffy, as they should be. Take some of that rich onion gravy. These were traditionally served at the beginning of a meal in Yorkshire to fill people up before they ate the main courses. So they were sort of a peasant food, but as a peasant food they taste. Let's try this one. Mmm. Absolutely delicious. Just like my grandmother used to cook. Except for she used to do a big square one in a square dish, which is the way they were traditionally cooked also. I'm going to go for another helping. That's absolutely lovely. Mmm. That's great, guys. Try that at home. You won't be regretful. You'll love them. Okay? Take care. Goodbye.